Hello and welcome to my tutorial series Baroque Improvisation for Jazz Guitarists. My name is Markus Fleischer. So in this video I want to show you a harmonic and melodic device Johann Sebastian Bach is using a lot in his compositions. This device is easily transferable to guitar and as you can use it on almost all chord forms you get a lot of mileage out of it. I'm going to show you how to practice this device on guitar, how to incorporate it into your own style of playing and I'm going to show a quick demonstration how to use it on the first nine bars of the beautiful standard All the Things You Are. When I played through the Sarabande by Johann Sebastian Bach, it's a beautiful short piece that is part of the Partita for solo violin in B minor. At the yeah, last third of the piece, um, there is one measure that goes like this. Let me do that again. And I always like this measure. I try to understand what is happening and why I like it so much. And soon I realized that there are some things happening in this measure that is actually happening throughout the piece. So what is happening here? First of all, to make it a little bit easier to talk about this, let's transpose from B minor to C minor. So we go up one fret and I play it in C minor. <laughs> Let's look at this horizontally. We have the top note, the C, and it goes up the scale to the third of the chord, D, and then to the E flat, third of the chord, C, D, E flat. And the bottom voice is doing just the opposite. It's It starts at the third of the chord and it goes down the scale to the root. So it's E flat, D to C. So when you play those two lines together, you get this. This concept of one voice going up and one voice going down is called contrary motion. And this is a pretty simple example of contrary motion but it sounds beautiful. We can play this whole progression in major too. Let's do that. C major, G, to C major again, in root position again. Yeah, so a good thing to practice and to be able to do is to transfer this progression to a different string combination. So now we played it on the A string, D string, G string and B string. Let's move this whole progression one string up and play it here. This is how it would look like in C major. Now, let's take this chord progression out on the road and try it out on a standard. Let's take the first couple of bars of All the Things You Are. The Sarabande is in a 3-4 measure, so let's play this in 3-4-2. If you would play this in a jazz way, in 3-4 it would sound like this. Let me go quickly through the chords of all the things you are. It starts on F minor or F minor 7. B 
flat minor 7, E flat 7 to A flat major 7 or A flat with a 6, D flat major 7 or D flat 6 to G7 to C major 7 or C6. practicing purposes let's overuse this progression on all the chords of the first couple of bars of all the things you are so F minor B flat minor It's a good exercise, but it needs some help to be really useful in our playing. I liked it on the F minor 7, just pure and clean this progression, because F minor is still the minor tonic. And although some real books say F minor 7, that's technically not wrong and you don't play any wrong notes, but it's nice to have more a pure F minor sound or F minor major to indicate you have the tonic of, um, of the key, F minor tonic. So that sounds nice. For the B minor 7, I would change the progression slightly so you end on a B flat minor 7. And we should do this too when it uh, when it comes to the E flat 7 so really having the the minor 7 and indicating it's a dominant chord so on the A flat major we can we can either play this or go to the A flat 6 certainly incorporate the G7 into this progression so and then C major or C major the 6 so let let me show you how this sounds from the top that's a lot better than playing all the chords clean minor or major chords but still I have to say after the B flat minor 7 I want to hear a different idea it's just too much of the same so I came up with a version where I used this concept quite a bit but also incorporated some other ideas from this Sarabonne and I came up with this version and maybe you like it too. Yeah, so 
for the F minor, I played very pure our progression, like Johann Sebastian Bach is using it. And for the B minor 7, I just ended it on the B minor 7. And then for the E flat 7, I did something else, this. And for the A flat that is coming now, it's kind of the same principle, I just left out the middle voice. For those two chords, and then played the A flat major 7. Then for the, for the D flat chord, this is the subdominant. And the subdominant is always, for me, at least a special moment where I want to sometimes have a big, full sounding chord. So I played this one. So it's root, fifth, third, and third on top. Doubling the third as the melody note, that's always nice. You could also sneak in the major seven in this. That's also nice. It's a big fat chord on the subdominant. After this big subdominant D flat chord, I thought it would be a nice contrast to go small again. And for the G7, just play two notes first, the G and the B with a little melody. Then for the C chord to play this. And that's also con contrary motion but with different notes. We start on the fifth of the C and the third of the C, so G and E, and the bottom melody is going down and the top melody is going up. And when we add some ornaments, it sounds also nice. So. And then going, this voice is going down to the E, and we play an E minor 7 chord, which substitutes for the C chord. So we have, yeah, and then for the, I added between the C major and the C minor, the ninth bar of all things you are, I added a, a dominant harmony, so G7, and I played this. straight from the Sarabande by Johann Sebastian Bach. Let me do that again. So let, let me play the whole thing again. I hope you enjoyed this video on Baroque improvisation and it would make me very happy if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. So goodbye and see you next time.